Here now with more on the cancellation of the Argentina-Israel friendly is journalist at the sports channel Sport 5, Gil Barak, partner at Rimon Cohen and company PR, Benny Cohen, and ILTV correspondents Joy Gavijon and Nori Lizarraga. Thank you all very much for coming in. But my first question, and I'll, I'll start over here on the side, you know, wh what do you think the actual root cause of the cancellation was? We'll start with you. You know what? Uh, let me lower the flames a little, a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, I think that uh, the whole thing got out of proportion. Um, you know, people are noticing what happening, what's happening in the uh, northern border of Israel, mm -hmm. uh, the tension. Uh, it's not the, the most peaceful time to, uh, to visit Israel if you're not familiar with the, uh, the climate. Mm -hmm. um, and they decided a week before the biggest event of their career, of their uh, nation, because the expectations are so high from the Argentinian uh, national team, not to show up. That's the, that's the big story. I think it's, so, it's to somewhat understandable. So you don't think you know, maybe it was uh, you know, the death threats or anything else that had anything to do with Nobody it? Nobody pays attention to the facts. It's always like that. They don't pay attention to the facts. Mm. I mean, those who hate Marie Regev, well, why did she have to put it in, in Jerusalem? In Haifa was okay. Of course not. The BDS and the Palestinians didn't want this to happen because they understood this is a big win for Israel. So everybody pinches the right facts that he would like to pinch and then focuses on that. Basically, I believe that if you have one, one artist, it's about him or her. If you have a, if you have a, a group of, of players and the families are threatened, it's quite understandable that they don't want to come. Yes, it is a win for the Palestinians. It doesn't really matter whether we thought we go to Jerusalem or not. But one thing I would like to, mm. to, to, put, to point here. This is good that that has happened because we are looking forward to the Eurovision contest within a year. And then the same question will be there. So let us learn what we can learn from this event in order to make right that we'll have the Eurovision contest next year. So, okay, let's, let's talk a little bit about the Eurovision contest and, and kind of, you know, what, what do you, how do you think this might, uh, uh, you know, uh, affect that in the future? Well, I think uh, whenever these kind of things happen, um, it sets, um, let's say, a tendency for the next year because this was a huge international event. It was, and people were excited about it. And now that it's been canceled and they, they brought terror and fear to something like sports, to something, to um, a cultural exchange, because it wasn't even a competition. It was a, about a friendly match. How can you, uh, then you're gonna have next year Eurovision with all these different countries coming yeah, to Israel. It's also supposed to be friendly. Yeah, exactly. But it's like a, but at the end of the day, it's a competition that legitimizes the state of Israel also. Right. So it's nice to have it here. I right. think the problem is that um, like the, what BDS did right now, mm. what they achieved, what they claim they achieved is something that encourages them to do it again, to try to do it again. So why wouldn't we expect this to happen for Eurovision mm -hmm. then? And why couldn't the Israeli government find a way to avoid this beforehand. So, sure. as he said, I think this is a way but to learn for... Why, why to avoid? I mean, why should we, why should we back, back, back ourselves in a situation that somebody doesn't like it? The BDS can be encouraged by what has happened, but anyhow, they want us out of this building in the sea. So, I, I don't, I'm not sure also, that the right way is always to say, okay, Let's let's play it safe. Let's not not bring uh, the revision or whatever. But but I believe that you actually did touch upon something which a lot of people are are arguing that the event was politicized beyond what it should have been here in Israel, either by you know Israeli leaders or by Palestinian ones. So the moving to Jerusalem, it it was it could be construed as a uh, as a political move, couldn't it? I, I disagree. I think uh, a huge sporting event had ha had happened here like, what, three weeks ago, the Giro, the Italia. Mm -hmm. It was here, started at Jerusalem. It well, there, was, there were allegations of that being yes. politicized as well, but with, it, with the flyers being recalled. And yet again, it was still conducted flawlessly. Uh, no security uh, measures. Um, I mean, security uh, did their job. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, accordingly. Everything went smooth and nice. And again, I'm, I'm taking you back to the beginning of the conversation. It's this week, these last two weeks that are a bit warm in terms of, uh, of uh, political uh, tension. That's the main reason for the, the Argentinian uh, national team not to show up here. The rest I, is... You know, I do think that the moving the game to Jerusalem had a say on that because the, like we reported before, like the BDS movement that started this campaign to not let, like to ask Argentinian team not to come here like long before, right when mm-hmm. the game was announced. Right. So mm-hmm. in the beginning, they said we're coming. They said, doesn't matter, we're gonna go. Mm-hmm. They weren't even afraid of the threats that because they got, they got threats before this. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, the I, fact of moving the embassy, the embassy, sorry, the fact of moving the game right after the embassy move, I think mm-hmm. it is a political statement. In, in a way. The timing of that political statement, I think that was the main issue because if you look back into the BDS thing, uh, it's, it's always around for every artist that wants to come here to play. They always mm-hmm. encourage people not to come here because of this. Right. And I think uh, in this case, I think it was a, it, it was a, a wrong move. I would, call it like, I would call it like that because it's like it was adding fuel to the fire of this last couple of weeks. So, okay. So, Coming off of that, I'd like to go back to you, uh, Benny. Just it, it, threatening players to get them to do what you want, is, that, is this like a proof of concept after this? Is, are we going to see a lot more of that in, in, things, in events that Israel is involved in or in general? Yes, of course. The, the, it, it has happened. It will happen. Everything is politicized. Nothing is pure. Nothing is really art or, or game of soccer or game of, of everything is politicized. We have to understand that. And... Not only in Israel. I mean, people don't go to the United States because of Trump or because they like Trump mm. or Putin or because they like Putin. Whatever. The whole thing is always politicized. And, of course, each one of the parties would like to, 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 to advance more. So if threatening will help, okay, let's uh, start more threatening. But will the threatening will really influence those who mm. would like to come? I'm not sure. Political uh, parties will jump on the bandwagon of, of each and every case, but the fact is that uh, some, some, let's say, music artist decided to show up and perform in Israel, and some didn't. You know, sure. so so it it has been like this, and it will continue. This specific event of not having the game of Argentinian national team in Israel is one of the events. It doesn't say anything, in my opinion, about the next one. All right, and on that note, we will uh, have to end it and move on to our next topic. So.